so it is the day before Thanksgiving 2009, and I'm at my parents' house, which is in the woodsy part of Princeton, New Jersey. I'm working remotely, I'm doing a little laundry. I walk across the den to throw a little whites in the dryer, and I look down, and there's a snake on the floor in the house, which is a disaster because I'm phobic of snakes. Now, phobias are not like, ew, snakes, gross. Phobias are an irrational and excessive fear that produce a very real physical sensation. And the sensation is that you're going to die. <laughs> now, most phobics know that they're being irrational, but that feeling that you're going to die, it overwhelms the intellectual. So, I see the snake, I run upstairs to the kitchen. Actually, I don't remember running upstairs to the kitchen because it is common if you're a phobic that you will black out for some part of an episode. But I'm suddenly at the top of the stairs. Um, my heart is racing, I'm breathing really heavily, I'm trying not to cry. And I do what people do during natural disasters. I tweet about it. <laughs> it draws a range of responses, the most common of which by far is to get the fuck out of the house. Now, I understand that, that logic, that makes sense, but my thinking is a little different. I'm thinking that if I don't keep an eye on the snake, it's going to slither behind the bookcase, and we're going to lose track of it, and I will never be able to return to my parents' house again. So I call our neighbors, who are Princeton University biologists, and the husband suggests that I get a mongoose, and the wife... <laughs> YouTube, the wife suggested that I get a drink. I called my parents at work, and they were completely unmoved. Which is weird, because my parents are both phobic. My dad is afraid of chickens, my mother is afraid of heights. In our family, this isn't that weird. My grandmother was really afraid of mice. My aunt is a phobic of mice. I like to tell my aunt that my phobia eats her phobia for lunch. Um, are phobias inherited? And it turns out nobody knows. The literature is filled with phrases like, many researchers believe, and it may also be true. Um, what we do know is that in the United States, about 10 million people a year suffer from phobias. Um, far more women than men report phobias. Researchers believe that far more men than women mask them with alcohol. <laughs> Common phobias include chickens, snakes, spiders, heights. Less common, the fear of farting which is called fartophobia. I guess the pH makes it more scientific. <laughs> now, my own phobia has no origin story. There's not a thing that happened, but I have had it as long as I can remember. I used to hate Ranger Rick magazine. I was afraid that I would open it and touch a picture of a snake. Like snake uh, pictures are actually a problem. Um, and I spend part of my time in San Francisco, and those of you who live there may have seen that the Cal Academy is having a reptile show this summer, which they're advertising with photos all over town, including a 10-story billboard next to my office of a guy being strangled by a giant yellow snake. <laughs> this summer is sucking. Um, so, you know, pictures are one thing, but much more serious are those squiggles on the ground, which look to you like twigs, but to me, they all look like potential snakes. So it doesn't matter if the squiggles are poisonous or not, I'm having that feeling all the time that I might die. So about 15 years ago, I got some therapy for it. Um, I went to a guy who said, there's two ways we can deal with this. I can lock you in a room with a snake for two hours, you'll be cured. Or I can expose you to gradually snakier and snakier things. <laughs> I went for option two. <laughs> Um, which meant that for a long time there were like rubber snakes coming out of my silverware drawer every time I opened it. Um, but it basically worked. Um, but it fades over time. You have to kind of keep it up. And so if I wanted to go to, say, the Amazon, which I would never do because of the snakes, but if I wanted to do that, I would go and get the therapy again. I would sort of just go through that desensitization process. Um, and in the meantime, I basically just live with it. Um, so that brings us back to my parents' kitchen, where I decided to take my neighbor's advice and I drank my way through the weekend. Um, and it, it worked actually remarkably well because I tend to nap a lot and everybody just thought I was drifting off when in fact I was passing out constantly. <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing was that I tweeted about it and it kept getting replies all weekend long. And people really liked to tell me that I was being irrational. And by people, I mean men. They like to tell me, they like to say primarily, it's more afraid of you than you are of it. Peak irrelevance. Nobody ever says to a claustrophobe that elevator is more afraid of you than you are of it. <laughs> people also like to say when you're having a phobic experience that you're overreacting. So I feel like I'm dying and they say you're overreacting. My answer to that is of course I'm overreacting. Like, That's the point, asshole. <laughs> now, one little thing here, one, one final thing to remember at the end. 
Snakes have been spotted many places around the O'Reilly campus, in the cracks in the sidewalk, in the orchard, in the grass. Pro tip, it is not a cute idea to grab one and bring it over to me to test the phobic response. Thanks very much. <laughs>